Hello, this is Jeff Ryle from Leica Geosystems in Houston. Today we're going to quickly go over uh, combined scale factors and state plane grid coordinates and surface. And we're going to uh, use some data that's collected with the GS18 um, tilt and use the Infinity software. So let's take a quick look at, at map projections. So Lambert's used in Texas. So here's a spheroid um, or ellipsoid. And the Lambert intersects at two parallels. These parallels here, the first and second parallel. And the central meridian is the longitude that is pinned onto. So that's just a definition of, of the Lambert. Uh, this is a nice cross section. So the, the red grid is, would be state plane grid. It intersects at C and G, which would be the standard parallel. Scale factors would be one. And you can see here the inverse this distance from E to F on the grid would be smaller than on the spheroid or ellipsoid. Okay, so typically grid distances are less than on the surface. This is a more uh, three-dimensional cutout. So if we added terrain, we are actually working up on surface and that's gonna increase the distance or the disparity between a grid and surface coordinate system. So that's the uh, reason behind this uh, video. Um, so quickly, if you take a look at on a, on a project we helped a client out, here's a typical scale factor for Texas South Central. So over a thousand feet, if we move the decimal place three, um, you see there's roughly 12 hundreds of a foot difference between surface uh, infrastructure and surface coordinates and grid. Okay, so a big question clients have is how many specific figures you take your scale factor out to. So down here, typically the northern and eastern is to be state planes, 13 million, 3 million. So you want to have at least 10 significant figures when you publish your scale factor because um, you're dealing with such a big number. If, if I did do a scale and didn't put a shift, you typically see 1,700 feet difference. So if someone gave you a coordinate and you're staking out with your GPS, you're off 1,700 feet, a flag should go up saying, hey, am I comparing grid or surface? And that could be the difference right there. Okay. Um, if you use Captivate on the total station, uh, on the job, we can go to job properties. If I had control set with RTK, I could use the current setup on the TS scale, and that will calculate the scale factor if I wanted to work my total station in grid and stake in grid. Uh, if I want to work in surface, then the GPS can do a one step or a quick grid, and that will calculate uh, surface values that the instrument can use. But if you want to work on state plane, this is a neat feature on Leica total stations. So we'll also take a look at grid conversions. Some guys, uh, some clients have to publish this with their control. That's basically the difference between true north and grid. Okay. And uh, if you take a look here, the central meridian, if you're uh, west or um, of the central meridian, it would be a negative. And if you're right, it would be positive. Okay. Um, before we get into the details, just an overview of the Houston team. Uh, I'm Jeff, so I handle technical sales. Here's my information of full service facilities. So Ronald can be contacted if you need service. And then Meredith and Lorraine are a support team out in California that order parts and, and rentals and, and customer service. All right, so let's take a look at the Infinity software. Uh, this is a job with some data. If I go to view, um, this client actually created a field. What's really neat is you've got a background map. Uh, if you keep your uh, firmware current with a CCP or customer care package, you can click on this button. You have a, a background map. It's very subtle, but you can see what's going on to make sure. It's just great to QC your data, make sure everything's picked up and show where the data is. It's probably you know, within a, a one or two feet. Very, very accurate and very useful. Um, let's take a quick look at the data. I'll go over some, some quick tips. So with the 18, these are green, so it's got tilt. And basically, uh, we can sort by point ID. Let's imagine that um, the client had the field crew had the wrong codes from the 7 to 13. I can just highlight, hit shift, edit code, and I can pick the proper code and edit it that fast. If they have the wrong antenna height, there's a GNSS tab, and um, I can quickly highlight the points so you can sort by points and um, what I can do is scroll over and you can customize where that you see this data so I'm just going to edit this stuff the, the antenna heights let, let me simulate that they made a mistake so I'll change the rod height to zero so if they had this in the field and they, they made a note of the wrong rod heights I could highlight this right click edit and put in the right height and because this is a tilt um, it will use the tilt values to um, recompute your vertical and your horizontal coordinates. That's, that's a really nice feature. Another quick thing I like to do is 
you can customize the order of the variables that we have up here. And I'll show you how to do that. I can click quality 3D. So this is the quality of the RTK solution. And if I just double click, I can sort. And this point was off by like a foot. So I can quickly catch this, look at the code and see if that's acceptable. That's a quick way to QC your data. All right. Um, this shows the coordinate system that's being used. Sometimes we had one client where the core system was none. They come to try to compute. We'll hit the coordinates. See, it's grayed out to compute project coordinates. So project coordinates is the buzzword for surface. And that's because there's no coordinate system. So typically they, they had state plane, um, Texas South Central, the north and east, and it, it would be grid because that north and east is related to that coordinate system. So if you had like a one-step coordinate system, the northern east would be surface. But since this is state plane, these would be state plane grid. You scroll over here, project northern east would be the computed um, scaled uh, coordinates for that project. And then we have over here the convergence angle. There's a convergence angle. So to see this, um, if I just right click and select columns, I put this in the order that I wanted to see. So you got project northern east regular north and east in, and your convergence angles. So that's how you get the convergence angle that some clients might need. And you can move these around as well to customize them. Okay. All right. Um, so how do we compute um, surface? What I can do is I can come back here. If I hit the shift button, I can grab a bunch of points graphically. Okay. And it'll highlight these points. And if I go to coordinates, compute project coordinates, user entered. I could, if TechStock gave you a, uh, Scale factor, you can type it in, but basically I would hit selection and it, it uses those 187 points and there's a combined scale factor. So if I didn't have a shift and hit apply, um, let's take a look. And then basically my northern east end and my project northern east end look very similar. But I could put a shift like negative 13 million 700,000, then maybe a negative 3 million 100,000 and hit apply. And what that'll do is just shift those coordinates. So if I export them, they won't get confused. It looks more like a local coordinate from the furnace this to a uh, subcontractor. Okay. I have some other coordinate systems here, but if I wanted to do Texas Central, I can pop out, um, hit file, go to tools, go to coordinate systems. Then under manager, if I want to attach another coordinate system, I can scroll down. There's Texas Central copy that to the project. And once I do that, that coordinate system hit the home key would now be available. So down here, I can change it if I want to see that on Texas Central. So that's a neat feature to, to toggle between the two. Okay. All right. Um, so for convergence angle, um, everything's listed here. I could technically hit control A, right click, save as a CSV, and all this information be exported. Uh, and it'll be exported in the, in the format that I set up here, uh, the order. But I can also hit export, uh, hit all my data. And then what I want to do is click down here and hit ASCII. And I've got a template set up. So if I come here, we can edit that information, the template. And now I have Northern East, and so I'd be state plane grid. And we have the codes. So if I sort by point ID, if I hit feature, it allows me to edit. And I can come down here and customize what I want to edit. Some of these points have attributes, so I got V1, V2, V3 to, to merge those attributes together. And then I've got to be under feature to edit that. So I'll hit OK. And then we'll hit export. So I'll call this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Texas South Central, Geoid 18, grid. OK. Then we'll export that data. If I want to surface, once these, so you can see once these templates are set up, it's very fast to export data. So I'll come back and hit ASCII. And in this case, I got a surface template. So let's edit that real fast. I call that something that makes sense. So once again, I got project northern east in. Select columns, that's how I customize it. Point ID and you scroll down and you pick the order that you want. And then you can move these up or down uh, to customize them. So basically, once we hit OK, and I'll call this job number 45, surface. Okay. And then we'll hit export. So now I can um, come down under the archive. I can right click open and take a look at, at this data. So basically here's my point ID, northern, eastern, 
height is my code. And now with these R and rods, that the attributes that these attributes, you know, spinner, capped, and the RPLS numbers are now attached to that code when we import into our CAD. So that's just a quick overview on how to export your data. If you, let's say it's a couple months down the road, you, you forgot what the scale factor is, I can come back, highlight that project, and go to info and settings, and under coordinate tab, you'll see the scale factor right down here, the combined scale factor. I can highlight that, right click copy, and then put that in the email. Okay. So that's a quick overview of Infinity with some RTK data and how we can calculate surface and grid and convergence angles. And um, so hopefully you found that beneficial and helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us. Uh, once again, this is Jeff from like in Houston, and uh, I can be reached at 713-516-5446. We can help you with any of your survey needs. Thanks for your attention. Be safe and stay well.